Hello, and welcome to Point Counterpoint, a production of the Lion Newspaper and Lions Township Television. I'm your moderator, Lars Lawnroth. Today, the President of the United States is the most powerful person in the free world. And in order to be President, you only need to fit three criteria. Be 35 years old, be born in the USA, and have lived here for 14 years in total. But what are the good qualities of an American President? That's what we're talking about today on Point Counterpoint. We have Grace Coker, the editor-in-chief of the Lion newspaper here. Hello. And Greg Smith, the managing editor. How are you guys doing today? Really good. How are you? I'm good. Guys? So let's dig right in. What makes a good president? Do you want to start, uh, Greg? Yeah, sure. I think it's, you know, good leadership experience, uh, someone not having an ego that will push other qualified people away, and having a plan for where the country's headed with an accurate assessment of what the problems are and where the country could be better. How about you, Grace? Yeah, I definitely agree with everything Greg said. I think it's also somebody who is honest, who um, will be able to make sure that our country has the best has the best in mind for the largest amount of people, kind of fighting for the greater good, making sure that all voices are represented, and yeah. And so, uh, Greg, we kind of talked a little bit in, uh, in your article a little bit about um, how a candidate's words and actions should matter more than their experience to a certain degree. Can you talk about that? Is that a fair assessment? Yeah, uh, yeah I guess. Um, I think it's more of you know what their plan is. Um, if they have had experience in business, the military, or politics, what they've actually done with their experience. I think there's great leaders who are politicians, but there's also some kind of crappy characters and unqualified uh, professionals who are in politics. So that's definitely kind of a mixed bag. I mean, so is the military or business, but I think that closing off those other avenues for, you know, high caliber leaders is not really a good idea because there's a lot that can be, you know, lost if we do that. We've had a lot of great presidents who didn't have prior political experience. So And so Grace, you guys seem to be somewhat on the same page to a certain degree. Where do you think your major uh disalignment with Red's belief on this topic is? Um, I would say that for the most part where we disagree um, on this particular topic would be just that I personally believe that the best presidents have been had prior political experience whether that is via appointment or via election and Greg believes that um, political experience might be helpful but might not be and then decides to go believes that certain traits are more um, more beneficial for a president rather than their experience. I believe that while traits are important, that should be equally as important as their political experience because that is what is going to train them and kind of get them used to Washington and then prepare them eventually for the Oval Office. Do you think that's fair? Yeah, it's fair. Definitely that you know politics can help you get the lay of the land and help you kind of learn how to play the game. But there's some people who are really good at the game who are kind of you know subpar characters and like obviously. Trump has, you know, no political experience before, but he's, you know, still not a, not a good person, really. Um, <laughs> he's, I think his biggest problem as president is the fact that his ego gets in the way. Like Jeff Sessions and Jim Mattis, for instance, were really, really, really good cabinet appointees, and I was really happy when they were there. And also John Kelly too. Um, I mean, obviously, like that scandal, whatever. I, you know, not too. Mainly the other two are what I want to talk about, <laughs> but. Uh, I mean, I don't see why they had to go and like they, it was their choice. Well, Sessions resigned, um, but I don't, I, I don't get it why he can't, you know, hold down qualified appointees. I think that's the biggest problem I have with him. Obviously, you guys yeah. um, have, you know, problems with his policies that we've talked about in other debates. Um, but <laughs> yeah. the, also, just he says stuff. Sometimes he means it, sometimes he doesn't. And that's just really stupid. Um, <laughs> But he's kind of had that from being a reality TV personality. But, I mean, from what he's doing with taxes and, uh, you know, trying to secure the border, like, I don't really have a problem with that. But but you kind of seem like, like some people discounted him because he is just a real estate mogul. He's a person who came from reality TV. It seems like in, in your article you basically argue that that kind of stuff can be helpful in preparing a person for the presidency. Yeah, I mean, Talk it, a little bit yeah, so it can work if it's like, you know, a general or uh, another military flag officer, but if it's like, 
you know, the real estate mogul, reality TV personality, you're more likely to get a populist than a real leader for the ages. Um, but I would say that some of the worst presidential scandals have been, you know, prior politicians. Um, there have been whatever you want to say about Eisenhower, whether he was like, you know, a helicopter president or if he actually uh, did stuff that was good for the country, uh, you know, liberal with people and conservative with their money. Um, he was, you know, pretty clean and sanitary compared to, you know, Richard Nixon or Bill Clinton. Both it's of a, whom, by, sorry, by the way, <laughs> we're not terrible presidents. Like, yeah. Yeah, every president definitely has, you know, their ups and downs and not one particular act. Very rarely just one particular instance or act defined a presidency. Um, sometimes it does. Yeah. But I definitely think that um, while Eisenhower was a really strong president, he did have a strong sort of leadership background coming from the military. And part of what I have such a large issue with is Trump beyond his sort of misogynistic views and racism and lots of other things, but something like more to the point of this topic is that he is a reality TV star that was his career before this. And even though, like, I believe that if you, you know, serve for a long time in the military, that's a great prerequisite to go in because that's a leadership opportunity that's kind of, un it's a, a similar position, even though it's not necessarily by election, it's by appointment or just kind of rising up in the ranks. Um, it still teaches you those qualities that a good president should have, you know, the honesty, work ethic, serving the people, all of those sort of things. It obviously demonstrates a great love for your country as well. So I think that even if military experience, that's another great prerequisite. I just, again, personally feel that politics, politics is like the best. Um, but definitely with Trump, I just really feel as if going from you know a career in entertainment to leading the free world is a, is a pretty big jump that probably shouldn't have occurred. And so if you, to, if you were to rank Greg, which are the most important, uh, or like, I want to kind of talk about like what, kind of previous experience do you think best lends itself to being a president? Okay. So you talked a little bit about, you, you think military and politics are probably the best way to go, right? Yeah, and I definitely think that politics is a great way to go, even though, like like Greg said, like if you have a career in politics, you know, everyone knows politics has, kind of can be a dirty business, so maybe that gives you a higher chance of a scandal or some sort of, you know, error that you slip up on, but it also teaches you valuable skills that you're not going to learn from any other position in the world. It teaches you kind of like the know-how you get, you just get a very acquainted with dealing with kind of the workings of our government. There's a lot of ins and outs and certain, you know, certain loopholes, certain like hoops you have to jump through for certain tasks. And I definitely think that if you have a career in politics first, that is definitely going to set you up right for the presidency, or at least give you a strong background. And so Greg, your turn. Well, yeah. What do you think are the most, uh, the experience that's most important? Like within politics? Or, or just in general yeah. for a president? Well, so within politics, I'll start. Um, yeah. So there's a constitutional law professor at Yale, Akhil Lamar, who said that the U.S. Senate is only just 100 people who think that the nation would benefit from their service as president. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> and I really, most senators probably fit the bill. I don't really take most of them seriously, you know, when they're running for president. Cory Booker, come on. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I really like Marco Rubio, so I can't really just throw away the Senate. But I really think executive experience, like governors um, make, you know, good presidents. Um, but obviously, you know, I think business and the military uh, kind of do a better job because it's also the issue of having kind of this chosen oligarchy of politicians and these, you know, people that know better than ordinary people. I think is just really dangerous and kind of toxic. So something that I fear about having someone go from business to a presidency or to politics in general is there are certain laws that if you're the president you have to sever ties with your business or you have to kind of hand that off. You can't be too involved with a business as you're running the presidency. So I think and I know Trump's had his own fair share of issues regarding that, but I definitely think that business might just get messy if you're trying to get involved just because of this again, like the hoops that you'll have to go through to separate yourself from you know, your political, like if you're going to go into politics, will you be pushing your own, obviously you're pushing your agenda, what you believe is best, but you're, would you be pushing your business's agenda as well? And that's where it gets messy. If you wrap yeah. that up. And so, respond I, to that. I think that's also a good concern. Um, I, you know, I think usually though, people will kind of set things up so that they don't have to be completely involved and give preferential treatment to their business because, well, the wealthiest person ever to run for president, I 
don't know if it was Donald Trump because also no one's really sure how much he's worth. There was an article in Bloomberg about like, yeah, it might be worth a billion dollars. So I don't know about him, but I know before him it was John Kerry because uh, his wife was, I think, part of the Heinz family. So, um, I mean, I trust that if he had been president, he would have probably uh, gotten things separate, especially today when no one keeps secrets. Just to um, kind of end up, end off this discussion, there's so many um, candidates on the Democratic field. And so I want to ask you, regardless of your political affiliation, what kind of questions do you think voters should ask about the candidates running for the Democratic uh, nomination for president? Um, how are they going to pay for the Green New Deal? And why is it not considered uh, to be more of a, how should I put this nicely, uh, more of a stretch than building a wall on the Mexican border and making them pay for it? Grace? Um, I think, yeah, definitely concerns about the uh, feasibility of their promises. I guess a lot of people, when they are running for president, they make these campaign promises, and that's, are they going to be able to fulfill them? Are they not? I mean, it, I get, it depends on the person. So um, the most important question to ask someone running, I guess, what, what is the country that you want to see? What, what impact do you want to make on your four years? What will you do to benefit homeless, you know, minority figures, women? What are you going to do to make our country better and more equal for others? Well, hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thanks for having you us. can read their articles on the Lion Newspaper's page website eight. and on page 8 of the Lion Newspaper. Our website is Lion Newspaper, L-I-O-N, newspaper.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It's been a great discussion. Thank you. Thank you.